Okay, so don't get nuts. Not that I think you would, but whatever. Um, okay, so we have. Let me let me sort of give you a, a play by play of what's going to be happening now. Okay, so today we're going to learn about. Um, Naming and formula writing for acids, because they're a little bit different sort of a compound. Um, we'll probably do, go ahead and do metallic bonding today, which is super quick. And then that's going to leave us to talk about covalent bonding and molecular substances and naming and formula writing for those. I won't be here tomorrow. I am... I'm hoping that we will take the test on this unit on Friday. That's my goal. That's my hope. So we'll just see, we'll just see how it goes. We don't have a short day tomorrow. There's going to be no intervention tomorrow because of SOL testing. We're going to be on regular schedule. So, which is good. That just means we're in class for a little bit longer. So I'm hoping, I really am hoping to take that test on Friday. I'll let you know for sure tomorrow and I'll give you the review assignment. Well, I can let you know for sure by Wednesday. I don't know that I can tell you for sure by tomorrow, okay? But we'll see how it goes. So we're gonna start to talk um, right now about acids, okay? Now, we're gonna get into um, a discussion about acids in terms of what is pH, how do acids and bases go together, all of that sort of thing. We're going to get into that later. All we have to do right now is I need to be sure that you guys understand what an acid is in terms of how to recognize it, how to name it, how to write the formula for it. Yes, ma'am. You have Summer Morris. Yes, ma'am. Could you send her to the office for a minute, please? Sure. So, um, anyway, so we've got to talk about how to name them, how to write formulas for them, etc. Okay? What we're going to be doing next when we finish this unit is going into, um, it's called chemical quantities. But you guys are going to be taking the formulas for things and determining how much they weigh, um, what percent of a particular compound is oxygen, what percent of it is potassium, or whatever. Okay? And we do lots of chemistry with acids. A lot of life chemistry happens because of acids. And so you guys have got to be able to identify them. And certainly name and formula right, which is really what we're doing in this unit. Okay? So, just the basics for now. Now... An acid is an ionic substance, which means we've got a positive going together with a negative. So they are ionic substances where hydrogen is produced. Specifically, hydrogen cations. So we take these substances, if we mix them with water, the result of that, in part, is the release of hydrogen ions, okay? That's what defines an acid. Now, we will get into acid and base chemistry right before the SOL test. And we'll talk a little bit more specific about how acids behave and what they do and that sort of thing. But for now, you need to understand. And for high school chemistry, you need to understand that any substance that contains hydrogen as the cation, any substance that begins with hydrogen and it's not water, it's an acid. Okay? Please do not ever tell me that H2O, because it starts with hydrogen, is an acid. You know that it's water. Okay? 
Yes, it starts with hydrogen, but it's definitely not an acid. Okay? Now, if we have an acid and it contains hydrogen, and hydrogen is always the cation in these ionic substances, then what makes one acid different from another? The anion. So it's always something with a negative charge going together with hydrogen. Now, I personally don't think the naming and the formula writing for acids are incredibly difficult. The formula writing certainly is pretty straightforward because it's crisscross, drop, and reduce. They are ionic compounds. You need the two things with the charges. You crisscross, drop, and reduce. The cation is always hydrogen, always has a one plus charge. So the only thing you ever have to worry about is the anion. Is hydrogen going together with sulfur? Is hydrogen going together with sulfate? Is it going together with what? It doesn't matter. Whatever the, whatever the anion is. Okay? So that's really all you have to pay attention to in terms of acids. Okay? Identifying them, writing the formula, all that sort of thing. It's always going to be hydrogen and something else. Now, here's an example. So HCl is hydrochloric acid. If you take HCl, which is in a solid form, and put it in water, you create hydrochloric acid. After today, you're going to understand that this is hydrochloric acid. Prior to today and right now, if you saw this, what would you call that? Hydrogen chloride. Hydrogen chloride. It's hydrogen. It's chlorine. Hydrogen has a one charge. Chlorine has a one charge. They go together one to one ratio HCl. Hydrogen chloride. Yes? Hydrogen chloride is a thing, meaning it is a compound. It's in solid form, it's in powder, crystalline form. You take it and combine it with water, and the result is hydrochloric acid. This stuff is so reactive with water that we don't have hydrogen chloride just hanging around. Meaning, if you take the lid off a container of hydrogen chloride, solid hydrogen chloride, it will begin to react with the water vapor in the air and begin to form hydrochloric acid. Okay, so just keep that in mind. These things are all ionic substances, but after today, because this thing starts with hydrogen, and you guys maybe have not noticed that we haven't done any chemistry with hydrogen. We've been using all the other cations except hydrogen. We've had hydrogen in ammonium, but we haven't, we haven't used hydrogen as a cation yet. Okay? Fields went shopping. Here's another example. This substance right here dissolves in water and forms hydrogen cations and nitrate anions. After today, you will know that this substance is called nitric acid. But right now, prior to learning that, what would you call this? Hydrogen, Hydrogen nitrate. Yes? Now, because most acids 
produce a characteristic anion when dissolved in water. The name of an acid is derived from the anion. Because they all contain hydrogen, it doesn't help us, it doesn't tell us anything to be naming the hydrogen. And we don't. The word acid tells us that it's hydrogen. Because all acids contain hydrogen. So we get the name from the anion. We get the name from the thing that the hydrogen is going with. We're going to get into it here, okay? Acids whose anions end in IDE. Acids whose anions end in IDE. When we name them, we begin their name with hydro, We change the IDE to IC. So IDE becomes IC. And then we add the word acid onto the end. So hydro something IC acid. So again, this. You said to me that this was hydrogen chloride, yes? So is that an acid whose anion ends in ide? Yes, which means that we call this thing hydro. We keep the chlor, because that's what tells us what is in it. Instead of chloride, we say chloric, hydrochloric, and then we add acid to the end. can't write on the smart board because I'm using smart software, which makes no sense, but whatever, okay? So if you want to make yourself a note, over here it might be good to put hydrogen chloride equals hydrochloric acid. Do you understand what I'm saying? So prior to today, HCl, you would call it hydrogen chloride. After today, you know that that's not correct that HCl is actually hydrochloric acid, okay? Let's look at another. Prior to today, what would you call this? Hydrogen sulfide, correct? Hydrogen sulfide, ide, I-D-E, okay? After today, you know that if you're dealing with something that starts with H, and it's not water, it's an acid, okay? So, we've got hydrogen going together with sulfur, which is just an element, which is an ide, so hydrosulfuric acid. Now, notice that we added the UR back in there. 
So when we have sulfur and it becomes an anion, we call it sulfide. When we have sulfur and it is part of a gas, I mean, a, excuse me, an acid, we add the er back in there, sulfuric, as opposed to sulfic. Do you follow? Now, if you're practicing writing and you mess that up and you call it hydrosulfic acid, I would not mark it wrong initially. As long as you got the hydro in there, as long as you got all the rest of it in there, okay? will not have hydro at the front. We do still change the ending to ick. All of the acids that we talk about in, in high school chemistry are ick acids. They are something ick acids. Couple examples. H2SO4. Prior to today, prior to learning that anything that started with hydrogen was an acid, what would you call this? Hydrogen sulfate. Hydrogen sulfate. Now you know that because it starts with hydrogen, it's an acid. Because this is an 8, this is sulfate, we do not use hydro at the front. This is just sulfuric acid. Can you appreciate that there is a big difference between hydrosulfuric and sulfuric acid? What's the difference in the name? Hydro. But the hydro tells you that it is hydrogen and a single element, one element. If there's no hydro in the name, you're being told that it is hydrogen and a polyatomic. Sulfate, nitrate, phosphate, acetate. Yes? Look at hydrochloric acid formula. What is the ratio of hydrogen to chlorine in that formula? One to one ratio. And I told you that these are ionic substances, which means that we make the formula how? Negative and positive. Negative and positive, and then we crisscross drop reduce. Okay? So they are together in a one to one ratio. Does hydrogen on the periodic table have a one plus charge? Does chlorine have a one minus charge? Yes. So when you crisscross, drop, and reduce, you get H1Cl1 and you say HCl, yes? Where does this two come from? Sulfur. From the sulfur. 
So hydrogen has, this is a 2 to 1 ratio. That's what's written here, yes? The 1's not written, but it's 2 to 1 ratio. Sulfur, group 16 on the periodic table, 2 minus charge. Yes? So that 2 charge comes over here. The 1 charge goes over there. You with me? So how do you write the formula? You have hydrogen with the 1 charge. You have the other thing with its charge, and it goes to the hydrogen. The thing that hydrogen is going with is always going to be one because hydrogen's a one. Do you follow? You're always going to have one of the anion. Where does this two come from? Sulfate. That's the charge of a sulfate. There's no parentheses here, but they're understood to be parentheses here. And what's the what's out here? One. A one. Where does one come from? Hydrogen. The hydrogen. What is the ratio of hydrogen to nitrate in this? One to one, because nitrate has what charge? A minus one. Are you with me? Okay. All right. So formulas are written using crisscross, drop, and reduce, just like any other ionic substance. That's why we're talking about these now prior to moving on to metallic bonding, prior to moving on to covalent bonding, because these are ionic substances. Yes, they're different. They always have hydrogen in them, but they are ionic. Now, think. Don't hurt yourselves. An acid is an ionic substance that when you add it to water, hydrogen ions are released because the acid contains hydrogen. So, is this statement true or false? Ionic substances, when added to water, are acidic. What do you think? True or false? So, true or false? I'm hearing true. Anybody think false? I'm hearing false. Somebody's right. Fifty fifty chance. Okay. All ionic substances are not acidic. But some of them are. But some of them are. Which ones? The acids. Which ones? Be more specific. The ones that have hydrogen as the cation. Do you follow? So, look at your periodic table. We didn't get those out yet. Some of you guys have them out. Get your periodic table out. Hurry, hurry. Potassium sulfide. Potassium sulfide. Is that an ionic substance? Is that something from the left with something from the right on the periodic table? Yes. yes, that makes it ionic. If I put potassium sulfide in water, will it make an acid? No. No, because to be an acid, I must have created hydrogen ions, yes? And those, here's a newsflash for you, those hydrogen ions don't come from the water. The water stays together. The H2Os stay together. The hydrogen ions must be released from the thing going in the water. Do you follow? Now, let me ask you this. Think, think, think. One of the characteristics of ionic substances is that when we add them to water, they are what? This was back the first day of ionic bonding. 
Right. They dissolve in water, and once dissolved in water, they conduct electricity and heat. Very well. They conduct electricity well. So, are acids good conductors of electricity? Yes. Yes, because they are ionic substances that are dissolved in water. Yes. Okay. So when we talk about acids, the characteristics that acids have. They are the characteristics of ionic compounds because they're under that umbrella. But acids do not envelope all ionic compounds. Do you follow? So you have to be able to, to determine the distinction between the two. Okay? Now, we're going to practice naming and formula writing here in just a sec. Okay? Remember, always, when you're dealing with an acid, the cation is hydrogen and has a 1 plus charge. Don't forget, hotel or travel size soaps, not soaps. The requests are body wash, shampoo, conditioner, deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste. Yeah, by, by Thursday, yes. Do hot chocolate bar Friday for the winning class, okay? So need those by Thursday. You got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in which to bring them in. All right. Now, we're going to do some practice. I want you guys to do this in your notebooks. This is happening right now. Right now. In class. In your notebook. We're definitely going to be able to move on to metallic bonding. That's going to happen. This is sort of our usual, uh, what we do all the time. If I give you the name, you write the formula. If I give you the formula, you write the name. Here's what I need you to do. Go through the notes that we just took and reason your way through these. I will help you. I will help you, but I'm not going to hold your hand. We are at the point in the semester where the training wheels have to come off and stay off. 